I'm sorry. Um, my computer died. I meant to finish up the the uh, movement one in that video, but there's a couple other things I did want to point out before I move on to movement two. If you do a more detailed analysis, like very specific on this subject, I want to point out a few things in terms of how it works here and the you know the exact intervals. Obviously, you can see here we rise up the fourth, and then we have the descending conjunct movement here. You're also going to notice if you compare the first little thing. This little pattern and this pattern are similar in the sense that they rise the fourth and then they descend melodically by step. But this one starts on a B and this one starts on an A. This is both a melodic technique you could talk about in the melodic question, the IB question about melody, um, and also on ways that Haydn adheres to 18th century style. And it's kind of interesting because in this overall picture, he's starting in A minor, which is not the way 18th century composers would start this open primary theme. They'd start it in the tonic key, which doesn't happen until here. However, on the small scale, we have this thing called melodic sequence, where you take a melody and you repeat it, but at a different pitch level. So you hear da da ba 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 da 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 dum. So it's kind of the same pattern, a fourth raised and then descending by step, and then you hear it again, but it's repeated at a different pitch. So that's a melodic sequence. So that's a very common practice in um, 18th century structure. Now, if you compare that to the way that Haydn uses that same theme in the development section later in measure 107. So here's the development section. You'll notice now he utilizes the same idea, rising this interval and as a leap and then descending by step. And then here it is in a melodic sequence again. But this time you'll see the interval is at a sixth instead of a fourth. So that's one way he develops that theme by, by I guess, creating that same sense of melodic organization, meaning an ascending skip, and then following it by descending steps or conjunct movement. Um, but he develops it by having it at a different interval this time. And he puts it in the key of C major. And that's the beginning of the development. If you will look at uh, measure 115 in your score, which is right here, you're going to see now that we have these B flats and A flats, and that's, and then F naturals, that's going to give us over a pedal C. Pedal tone just means their chords changing above a note that stays the same in the cellos and the basses down here on that C. However, all of this is implying the key, and including the D flats as well, by the way, F minor. So we're actually going to a very distantly related key to G major, which is where we started. And that's, as we talked about, one thing you do in the development section. Um, however, you're going to see he continues to do this repetition, not even at a melodic sequence, but see he does this one, two, three, four, five times without sequencing the melody. And that's kind of to uh, utilize that 18th century concept of using repetition with a melodic sequence. But instead of changing notes, he just keeps it on the B flat the whole time which again creates that kind of mechanical malfunction feel orally when we listen to that. And you'll hear that in that development section there. Um, also right here, you're gonna notice that um, we have this very unique interval D flat up to B natural. And that interval is um, a sixth, but um, it sounds like a minor seventh. So we actually call that an augmented sixth. And you're going to see that how that resolves is this D flat resolves down to the C in the next measure, whereas that B natural resolves up by half step to the C in the oboe line. So that resolution outward from D flat down to C and B natural up to C, that augmented sixth res res resolving is known as an augmented sixth chord. And that's going to create a kind of a different type of resolution into that C. Um, another key that he uh, plays with here is D, but it's D minor instead of D major, which would be the dominant relationship from the original. We have this 5-1 moving to D minor, which is the parallel minor of the dominant. So again, 
a um, little more distantly related to G. Then there's a, a very easy way if you want to talk about ways that um, he develops the theme um, but continues to like raise it and deflate it and kind of go back and forth is this feeling of dynamics. I guess I'll put this in green. I don't think I've used green yet. But piano, forte, piano, forte, piano, forte. You're going to hear these immediate shifts of dynamics. Um, whereas in typical 18th century, we would have like gradual changes of dynamic markings. These immediate shifts are something that Haydn likes to do um, for drama um, and surprising the audience. Um, eventually, we do get... Um, Again, some very unique melodic things in terms of the types of scales that we're using. We have the B flat and C sharp indicating this D minor kind of feel. And then eventually we do get into measure 130, 140, 141. We get this F chord, which also has A sharps. That is the five of B minor. So here's another key that Haydn is playing with in this development section. And then finally, he does give us a very clear 1, 6, 4, 5, 1, um, getting back into the recapitulation, which starts at measure 154 here. And then you're going to hear this bum, 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 and you hear that main primary theme coming back at here da, 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 dum. and now we're um doing now that that original fourth jump from the beginning and this time he does put it in the g major and then you're going to hear the recapitulation repeat basically what we have had up to this point okay so let's play that transition into the development all the way to the transition to the recapitulation so you can kind of hear how that all works in context with what we just discussed. So here he's coming up on those eighth notes on B. This time he goes into development. And now he's got those major sixth. So the melodic sequence, but now the major sixth. Block sequence again there. Hear that same pattern being repeated over and over again. Thank <laughs> you. 